Hello, okay. So I want to do a video response for my journal number five. Um, and I just want to do um, a Starbucks and chat kind of response um, in the style of. Um, so to start off, I'm drinking an iced green tea lemonade with a scoop of matcha sweetened. And I just want to have a casual, you know, casual coffee chats, but I have tea. So this is what was my idea is I want like, casual chats um but you know instead of drinking coffee we're drinking tea so anyways i want to talk about the power ballad um <laughs> because these journals are kind of about how poetry has transcended through time and how it's changed what's interesting is the other day i saw i don't want to miss a thing by aerosmith was um it was dubbed so like the number one power ballad of the 80s and I thought that was really interesting because you know we had just studied ballads and um, I didn't really see anything that we put in there kind of like in the likes of Aerosmith um, a rock band um, but you know in one of our resources um, we read the power ballad by David Metzer and I was, you know, I was going through it because I used to listen to I Don't Want to Miss a Thing in high school. Um, I would drive around in my car with my best friend, kind of like screaming that song and crying. Um, and it's funny because, you know, David Metzer talks about in his piece how ballads are typically about love and loss. Like these two things that can, you know, these two emotional phenomena that have grasped humanity as a whole um you know the, the, those have like definitely transcended through time um this idea that love and loss are kind of what we would make a ballad about it's something that you know regardless of what era you're in those feelings kind of capture you personally um you know it's very I don't think there's anyone who doesn't feel an intense an intensity towards this things um and I definitely thought that was interesting and uh what I find to be interesting is the self-expression um that kind of makes power ballads unique um or at least in David Metzer's paper um I thought it was funny because you know rock and roll um which Aerosmith is under the the genre of is you know is rejected by conservative America and I think a lot of it was their freedom of self expression um, and because I think self expression can be really threatening in a lot of ways um, and what kind of like defines the power ballad is that it has expressive characteristics um, in the eyes of David Metzer. And the lyrics kind of like uh, top it off more than anything else. And he even says, um, power ballads climb up from relatively quiet introspective openings through a series of expressive plateaus, each more intense than the last. If you listen to I Don't Want to Miss a Thing, it is such, such a build. Um, and it says how lightly scored introduction for acoustic instruments and then switches over to electric instruments or unreals and orchestra and that's definitely how I don't want to miss a thing works is it starts off in this beautiful violin um, and it's very slow and then it goes it it builds it builds further and further and I I think that's what I love about it because I think that's really what self-expression is it's like this intense building it's it starts off slow and then you dig deeper and deeper and what I love about the song is if you were to like chop through it, kind of like if you weren't to listen to it as a whole and just kind of, you know, go into different parts of it, you might not think it's the same song because it sounds so different at each part of it because it starts in violin, then it goes into electric guitar and like almost kind of like an, um, not whining, but like a pleading singing voice. And then it goes to full out screaming on that uh, from the lead singer, Steven Tyler. And I, you know, I think that's what captivates me the most is that it is that expressive and I love how Metzer does call it a series of plateaus because it's, I would say that, like, it's like you start with violin and it's not a short amount of time, it's a long time and each part is a long time, like it's a plateau. Um, 
So that's what I really like about it. I thought that was interesting. Um, I thought it was interesting that, you know, rock and roll was really rejected in conservative America, and a lot of that was, like, the church and its rejection of it. Um, Because, as I said before, self-expression has been really threatening. Um, But I think a lot about something that uh, this ballad in particular reminded me of is kind of like the Psalms in the Bible. You know, I thought a lot about how King David was very authentic with God in those... um, in the Psalms, he kind of, he talks about how he wants to either get up and dance or he wants to sing or he wants to laugh or he wants to cry. And there's like times when he even like shades God low key in some of his words. And it's kind of like, I thought that was funny, just like how expressive the Psalms were. And I would say that a lot of times the, the Psalms even reminded me of an increase in intensity. And the Psalms are poetry. Um, You know, I don't know if they would totally fit into the realm of ballad but I thought it was interesting because you know rock and roll has always been threatening because of its freedom of self-expression um but you know if we look at like humanity in the bible we'll see so much self-expression there and how much it's widely appreciated um you know even and how beautiful the psalms are and I just thought it was really cool to see kind of like those two It made a lot of sense in my head, and this is coffee chat, so everything doesn't have to make total sense. Um, Yeah, and another thing I like that David Metzer says is, musically and emotionally, things have gotten to such a point that the momentum pushes through beyond the governing key. And I think just, like, I think that's, like, a good kind of symbolic word for rock and roll is, like, the momentum pushes through. You know, like, they push past the momentum they go beyond and they just want to fully say what they're really feeling and I think that's really unique and actually my favorite part about I don't want to miss a thing is the part where he's screaming um which isn't melodical um it doesn't have any rhythm to it it's really messy it doesn't make sense almost like I wonder if people told him he should take it out um, because it just doesn't musically follow in, but I, I love it because it's just, like, the authenticity of it, and I think that's the thing about ballads is sometimes with the traditional ballads we see from the 1900s, or even in the Broadway ballads, is that it's this human expression coming out, but it's very restrained, um, and it's very meant to fit into this formula, and Metsu talks about that is, you know, power ballads aren't formulaic in the same way it's it's freeing um and it kind of like defies rules but I feel like that's kind of how what love and loss does to humans is like you have these feelings that are so intense you don't you know they're not necessarily meant to be restrained all the time um and restraining can be really unhealthy um so I thought it was really cool to kind of like just draw all these random comparisons that might make more sense in my head than they actually do. But I just really want to chat about that over video. Um, And thank you so much for watching. Bye.